Final Fantasy XV, ironically named after the average age of the teenage girls in the demographic that this game is marketed for. Kill, 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 kill. Joking, I'm just joking. Put down your pitchforks. I mean, I love Final Fantasies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Not you 13, go home, you're drunk, and take those two atrocities with you as well. <clears throat> 14 and now 15. I mean, this game has been a long time coming. Originally announced in 2006 as Final Fantasy vs. 13, and was set to be set in the same universe as Final Fantasy 13. Thank God that didn't happen, eh? So we finally get the 15th installment on the PC, and it's a rather interesting package. For those of you who aren't clued up, the Windows Edition and the Royal Edition on the consoles are one and the same. This means it comes with all of the DLC released to date, that includes four additional story chapters for each of the party members, uh, the off-road mode for the regalia, and the multiplayer expansion, plus a few costumes and other knickknacks. So no complaints about value for money from me, but is it actually any good? Let's have a gander, shall we? The story follows Prince Noctis Lucis Kellum? Clum? Callum? Fuck. Yeah, that guy. And his crowns guard, that just happened to look like every J pop boy band ever. As they take a glamping road trip across the kingdom to deliver the prince to his arranged bride to be Lady Luna Freya Knox Fleury? <laughs> Fuck it, she's Lady Jesus, okay? <laughs> so Noctis and his paid for friends race to reunite the prince and Lady Jesus so they can get married and presumably have a bunch of kids with equally fucking unpronounceable names. Pardon? As any long-time fan of Final Fantasy games will tell you till they're blue in the face, the best things about these titles are usually the characters. But unfortunately, 15 went straight down the middle of the road with generic. So we have Prince Noctis, who is a little bit... His bodyguard Gladiolus, who is a generic tough guy with a soft spot for pot noodle. More chutneys. Spicy curry flavour evening. One pot noodle cocktail! <laughs> Next up we have the prince's personal chef and chauffeur, Ignis, who is supposed to be the smart one. But he is very heavily reliant on his specs to see. I mean, who the fuck lets a blind guy drive royalty? And finally we have Prompto, who is so far in the closet he's finding Christmas presents. We're not coming out the closet, so you can just go away. So yep, broody, grumpy, smartass and peppy, the gang's all here. In addition, we have a supporting cast of Sid the Mechanic, anybody who plays these games knows there's always a Sid, who will upgrade your weapons for you. And we have the boobs of the adventure that come in the form of Sid's granddaughter, Cindy. Yep, that's going in the wank bank. So, on with the review. First up, gameplay. I think the best place to start is with the combat, as this is one of the biggest changes made to the series in years. So, Gone is the tactical turn-based system that the series is so well known for, and in with a new active battle system that at first glance can appear like it should belong in a Devil May Cry or Bayonetta game. But I have to say, it works pretty well for the most part. You have one attack button, which when held will cause Noctis to teleport around, comboing with one of his four equipped weapons. You have a dodge button, which when held pretty much makes you invincible at the cost of MP. Also, in addition to this, you can command each of your party to do special moves, and magic is kind of like throwing elemental grenades. The downside to this is sometimes the combat is way too chaotic, and you have no idea what the fuck is going on, with Noctis blinking around the place like Nightcrawler after an 8-ball of coke. Another big change 15 brings to the series is the open world, and oh my god, this thing is fucking huge. And absolutely littered with things to do, ranging from off-road races, monster hunts, dungeons, a ton of side quests. Oh yeah, the side quests. Okay, so this brings me to my first gripe. Doing the side quests is more akin to checking off a shopping list. I mean, you're supposed to be the prince of the land on a mission to save the world. And people be like, 
I lost my vegetables, come and find them for me. Or, get me an onion plant. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm trying to save the world here and you want me to do your fucking grocery shopping? You must be out of your goddamn mind! After playing games like Kingdom Come Deliverance or The Witcher 3, side missions need to be given a bit more attention to keep me interested. And I've got to say, fetch quests and busy work just don't cut it anymore. I think what made the busy work uh, a little bit worse as well was the fact that there is one really good side quest that I came across that I actually really enjoyed, where you have to hunt this behemoth that looks suspiciously like Zod from Berserk through some mist, tracking him to his lair before an epic showdown, and it just showed a glimmer of what the side quests could have been if they'd just given some love and attention. Being a road trip game, I thought also the driving could have been handled better as although you can, can drive, this is no Grand Theft Auto, so if you had dreams of causing mass roadkill in the lands of Lucis, you can forget about it. You pretty much just hold the accelerate and turn when needed, and this really kind of made me feel that the fact you can upgrade the regalia seemed pretty pointless. Although the monster truck and flying regalia conversions are cool as fuck. Each of the heroes has a unique skill that they employ throughout the game, and that can be leveled up as well and this can give you some really, really cool bonuses. So Prompto takes pictures and unlocks new filters. Ignis learns new recipes to make dinners at camp that give you powerful buffs. Uh, Gladio will find useful items on the battlefield. And Noctis goes fishing. Right now you're probably laughing at the last bit, but if you're old enough to remember Sega bass fishing on the Dreamcast, then you're in for a fucking treat. This one's huge. In fact, I may have spent more time fishing in the game than doing anything else. It's pretty addictive. You're fishing up a storm. Turn the rod toward the fish! Yeah, scored big this time! Let's talk about the graphics then, shall we? The graphics in this game are simply amazing, with some breathtaking views. As you cruise around in your car, you'll see some fantastic views, vistas, and mountain ranges. Derp! It's just as well, really, because you spend a lot of time travelling in the car not being able to do much. I wholeheartedly recommend you getting into a mobile game to play whilst you travel, or maybe do a crossword or Sudoku. The textures seem really solid, and the frames per second was great for me also. If there's one thing this game got 100% right, it was the look and feel of this beautiful world. And finally we move on to the sound. As expected with this series of games, the music is simply amazing. Some reprisals of old Final Fantasy classics like the Victory Fanfare or the Chocobo song are more than welcome for you. And a nice little bonus is the ability to buy all of the previous game's uh, soundtracks to listen to in the car, which I personally rather enjoyed. The voice work is all pretty solid as well, so good job on the audio. Final Fantasy XV is a flawed but still very good game, and although it's not the best the series has to offer, it's definitely the most ambitious. The problem I found with it was that the story was disjointed and about halfway through the game the whole playstyle changes and goes from open world shenanigans to the normal Final Fantasy linear on rails adventure and it seems to me like the developers had at least two different ideas of how this game should operate but instead of actually making any final decisions they decided to squish all the ideas into a giant Scooby Doo sandwich which ultimately left the game feeling sloppier than your mum on a Friday night. <laughs> So the final score for Final Fantasy XV, well since this is actually my second time through the game as I played it on the Playstation, I do feel like I'm being overly critical, but there are big things wrong with this game and they can't be ignored. I'm going to go with 7 out of 10, as the content for the price is fantastic, and I have had a decent time. I think I'm just a little disappointed, as it could have been so much more. Sucking on my titties like you wanted me, calling me all the time, like Blondie, check out my Chrissy behind, it's fine all of the time. 